after giving psilocybin to the last person in 1977 with my three-year-old son helping me carry things down the elevator. And now yesterday he was beside me running a, a workshop here. <laughs> I hope I don't wake up anytime soon. Oh, <laughs> this is a great dream. <laughs> Called LSD. In the late 60s, at the Maryland Psychiatric Research Center, a group of researchers investigated the framework LSD psychotherapy, where they administered huge doses of LSD, ranging from 250 to 800 micrograms. But this scene shows LSD as it looks and sounds far from the glare of the headlines in serious medical research. They published a wide array of articles, which showed that psychedelics seemed promising for several mental health disorders. Can you tell the audience at home a little bit about uh, what that research was in the 60s and 70s? Well, I be, uh, first became involved in this incredible field uh, when I was a graduate student at the University of Göttingen in Germany in uh, 1963. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, that woke me up to... Uh, what, the vastness of the inner world, if you want to say that. And then I uh, returned to the United States and uh, uh, finished a couple degrees in psychology of religion and the type. Uh, and then worked for 10 years at Spring Grove Hospital in Baltimore, which became the Maryland Psychiatric Research Center. Uh, in all kinds of studies with LSD and DPT and MDA and so on, and the treatment of alcoholism and uh, severe uh, depression and um, working with cancer patients, dealing with issues at the end of life. And then in 1977, that became totally dormant and psychedelic research ceased in the United States as in most of the world. And there was a 22 year period of dormancy and then uh, Roland Griffiths and I uh, uh, at Johns Hopkins were able to start things in around 1999 and uh, we're going strong. And look at this, this conference here. 11,000 people taking, it's crazy. taking time out from their work, spending an awful lot of money to travel and register. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> if I only knew. There's a movement starting now. And, yeah, and, uh, it's, uh, from, I, I contrast this with when I was emptying out my office after giving psilocybin to the last person in 1977 with my three-year-old son helping me carry things down the elevator. And now yesterday he was beside me running a, a workshop here. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't wake up anytime soon. Oh, <laughs> this is a yourself. great dream. <laughs> All right. But, uh, That's very interesting. Um, yeah. And so do you see any differences today and uh, in the 60s and 70s doing research on psychedelics? Um, well, certainly it's in countless sites now where it was a very unique sort of like you know, when the stars are first coming out, you see Venus, <laughs> and then you see another star, and, and then all of a sudden there's the whole Milky Way. Well, that's where we are now. There's a whole Milky Way here, mm -hmm. and things going on in all kinds of different countries in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, we have lots of work to do. We're trying to do good science, careful, clear thinking, but the uh, implications of this research are immense, not only for medicine, but also for education and for religion. 
uh, where science is really bumping into the sacred. And I think that's the growing edge of science. It's, uh, but we're discovering some very sacred, beautiful parts of the human mind and the ways, new ways healing can happen. Uh, and our world can use some of that, you know. That's for sure, yeah. definitely. So, um, where do you see uh, this field uh, of scientific endeavor? Where, where do you see it in 20 years? I probably won't be here in 20 years. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't say that <laughs> Maybe I'll see it from another perspective. I don't know. But I feel very good about uh, so many competent, dedicated people working on this frontier right now. And um, think of what the world would be like if there was less addiction, less depression, if we approach death uh, with acceptance and openness and interpersonal closeness uh, instead of fear and denial. Uh, if sensitivity to the sacred, however that's put into words in the institutional religious context or a more philosophical uh, relation to nature context, mm -hmm. you choose your words. But the, if there was a sensitivity of, to the, the preciousness of being human, you know, the Buddhists say we're having one precious human life. It'll last for a hundred years or less. Don't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. It's a miracle. Yeah. And if more people had that sense, instead of uh, being mildly or chronically depressed, uh, I think the world would be a much healthier place. Mm -hmm. All right, so Bill, one last question. Then. Okay. Um, what is happening right now at Johns Hopkins University? Multiple studies at Johns Hopkins. Um, and our staff there has gone from three of us to over 50 now. <laughs> and the budget in the millions uh, is just mind boggling. So there's always countless new projects being developed. My own efforts are primarily focused now at Sunstone Therapies uh, at the Aquilino Cancer Center in Rockville, Maryland. And uh, we're, though we're doing many different research projects, our main focus is integrating psilocybin into palliative care in oncology centers, the kind of delivery of the care um, beyond the basic research that we've done so right keep right. tuned <laughs> stay tuned <yeah. laughs> uh, we're uh, just one final thing we uh, we actually have this big uh, cancer study right now or cancer re related depression in sweden uh, wow. taking off with 100 people multi-center um, they got actually two mil uh, two million dollars uh, a grant uh -huh. from uh, from our government um, do you, as a clinical psychologist, do you have any tips and, or, or tricks to, to the psychologist working on this study? No, I would be happy to consult with them if I can be helpful in any way. Uh, it's very meaningful, sacred work. Uh, and uh, people who are seriously ill have a sense of what matters and what doesn't. And you, it's, it's wonderful being in the world with them and sorting out uh, what really matters and how to live fully. And uh, the wise use of the psychedelics uh, helps many of those people live much more fully and joyfully uh, than they otherwise might have. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bill. You're welcome. <laughs>